What on earth will Warren do? A half of heroics followed a half of hilarity last weekend in Cardiff. How will Gatland pick up the pieces? Hello, amateurs. Welcome back to our Six Nations series. And I'm going to be with you throughout the championship. So hit subscribe to make sure you don't miss out any future episodes. And today I'm going to be looking at what I think the Wales team is going to be to face England this Saturday at Twickenham. St George and the Dragon, baby. Now, Wales, obviously, last weekend had a game of a game of two halves, I think it's fair to say. Um, Elko and I went into great detail on that. We were fizzing after that game. It was absolutely wild and we loved it. And you can go and check out our full analysis up there. Um, yeah, we really get into the weeds about the psychology of playing in a game like that. It is crazy what a swing it was. But it's worth saying, that as bad as Wales were in the first half and as good as they were in the second, they're never quite as bad as it actually seems at the time. And, and also, they're never quite as good as they appeared in the second half either. There's fine margins involved in all of this kind of stuff. So it's good to try and take a balanced view, if possible, even though, you know, the scores were ridiculous. Um, I think, interestingly, the players will react differently to that. Some players will be probably scarred from what happened in the first half. Other players might be absolutely flying and inspired based on what happened in the second half. So I think a lot of the selections this week might come down to psychologically. How, how did those players react? How are they feeling now this following week? Are they feeling positive? Are they feeling confident, confident because of what happened in the second half? Or are they still feeling all the weaknesses and bad things that happened during the first? I think... That's what the coaching staff will be trying to find out during this week. And I think it will affect selection where, where you know, it's close. Just a couple of squad updates. Uh, Botham is out with a knee. It seems likely that will keep him out for the whole championship. A couple of players called up. Dylan Lewis, tight head. Plenty of caps. Playing for Harlequins and been playing pretty well, but mostly off the bench. Um, behind Will Collier and Cardiff back Five forward, Seb Davis, who's a big lump, has also been called up. Okay, let's get into it. These are the forwards that I think are going to definitely keep their spot from last weekend. Starting off at the loose head there, we've got Corey Domachowski, who I thought actually was a bit of a hero. He played the full 80 minutes, carried pretty well throughout and made a fantastic tackle later on against one of the Scottish centres. Daft Jenkins obviously had a, a very solid game, but uh, being captain as well will certainly keep his spot. spot. Tommy Rafael in a rearguard action was was good throughout. Some turnovers in the first half kept Wales in the game and gave them some attacking opportunities. And Aaron Wainwright, when you know when the chips were down in the second half in particular, was an absolute hero, uh, certainly in the ball carrying phases. So I think he'll those guys will definitely be starting. Um, And then, so the hooker spot, uh, Ryan Elias, the lineup was a, a bit of a mess in the first half. I'm not sure how much was that was his fault or the calling or the confidence. It's a lot of things going together there, but certainly it did improve in the second. Uh, big Leon Brown at tight head. It, it was his first game for a long time after coming back from injury, and he was largely anonymous. Uh, Adam Beard, again, faltering line out. You know, it was, it's tough to really pick him out of doing anything positive. And we've already mentioned both of them who was injured. So this is what I think Gatlin will go with. I think he'll go with Elliot Deer Hooker. Things just improved in the second half in the line out and he was a ball of energy around the park. Similar things to Kieran Azarati. He just uh, he just brought some energy and, and I think they're going to need that from the start. I think Will Rowlands is going to be fit and with his experience, I just think they need another big lump in there and that physicality that he'll bring and just some freshness. You know, I think they I think they do need some changes, not wholesale, as I mentioned, but some. And I think he'll bring that freshness there. Um, and then Alex Mann, who came off the bench and did well to take Botham's spot at blindside. OK, moving into the backs. And again, we'll kick off with those players that I think are going to definitely keep their spot. Um. Rio Dyer was excellent, wasn't he? What an absolute live wire. When he first came into the side, I wasn't sure about his real try scoring instincts. Like 
real finishing instincts I'm talking about. He didn't seem to have it as lively as he was and as energetic and all that kind of stuff. I'm I'm converted now. I think he's turning into a really top class winner. Tompkins, although I thought he had a pretty poor first half from his standards, he dropped the ball when Wales got into one good opportunity. He missed some tackles. And his misread was really what led to the first Van der Mover try when he stepped in when there was absolutely no need to. Uh, so he's got very high standards and I rate him as a player and he definitely came back into the game in the second half with some important touches. I just think they're going to need his experience and I don't think he can play as badly as he did in that first half again. And then Cam Winnett at fullback, I thought he was lively and energetic and some class as well. I just thought it, everything that he did really turned out fairly well. So, you know, you know, with everything that was going on in front of him to keep his composure and just play as well as he did, I thought stands him in good stead. Uh, Gareth Davis at starting nine didn't have a good game. I mean, it's tough behind a forward pack that's going, going backwards, but he made mistakes when they did get good ball and he just never got the forwards going forward. So um, it's going to be a struggle for him, I think. Costello, we think, will probably be out with the HIA. Owen Watkins was kind of anonymous at 13 and then Josh Adams at 14. Didn't look fit to me, didn't look fit. And he made, you know, that silly error giving a penalty away for no reason. That's not a reason to drop somebody, in my opinion. You know, you'd need to be doing that week in, week out, being consistently an issue to be dropped for it. But he just didn't look. Josh Adams is a quality, quality winger. Like, I've been such a big fan of his. And it didn't look like a fit Josh Adams to me. So... I think what they might go with is Thomas Williams and Lloyd. I mean, there's no doubt. I mean, and it could be coincidence, but when they were on the pitch, the game changed completely. And again, just because they were, there's lots of coincidences. It could have been because of them. It could have been for lots of other factors, but they both did well and they're both good players. So I think they'll start at nine and 10. Mason Grady, it's got to be his time now, hasn't it? Hasn't it? It must be. I think... They're going to need some inspiration. And I think Big Mason could provide it with Dyer moving over to the other wing. And George North, we believe, is going to be fit. Again, I think they need some confidence. I think they need some experience in there. And who better than Big George to provide all that, along with his obvious playing skills. Which takes us to the bench. Ryan Elias will move to hooker. Kemsey Matthias, who didn't even get on the pitch last week, um, which kind of says something... Um, no reason to drop him, though, I guess. Uh, at tight end, I think they're going to bring Dylan Lewis straight in. He's Like I said, he's been playing well in the Premiership off the bench. A couple of weeks ago, he came on for Will Collier in a Harlequins game, and David Flatman was kind of saying, it's a shame they took Collier off so early, just as they were lining up for this scrum that Harlequins desperately needed to win a penalty off, really, in the context of the game. And it was like, you know, a top-grade tight end like that, sometimes it's best just to leave him on. And then Dylan Lewis promptly destroyed the opposition scrum and won a penalty. So he has got some form at the moment and could do a job off the bench. Adam Beard, I don't think he can be as kind of anonymous and as he was last week. Again, he's a British Lion. He's a really good player. So I think line out's going to be key. So I think he'll come on the bench. Uh, along with Teddy Williams, who was a brilliant ball of energy when he came off the bench last week as, as well. So I, again, I expect him to come on from the bench and provide a huge amount of energy at Twickenham. And then Gareth Davis, Owen Watkin and Adams moving from the starting 15 to the bench. And what do we expect from Wales? I mean, are they going to just throw the script out and play like they did in the second half or attempt to play like they did in the second half from the start this weekend at Twickenham? I don't know. I don't think so. I think there's lots of factors that went into that environment that allowed them to be successful playing that kind of rugby on that day. I don't think they're going to find that environment at Twickenham on Saturday. So I expect them to start by playing a fairly pragmatic um, possession, sorry, territory-based game as they did last this last weekend. And hopefully they'll be able to execute it a little bit better than they did. Of course, they've got great players there to get if the game gets loose. Um, and they can change it like that if they want to. But I think they'll start relatively conservatively again. Let's see. What do you think? Do you think this is the side that Warren Gatland is going to pick? Do you think it's the side that can compete at Twickenham and beat England? I don't know. I'm not so sure. We'll find out, though. Um, but I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments down below. And um, give this video a thumbs up. 
while you're down there. If you don't mind, it helps every other people find it. And it's just good for everybody, which is ace. And you can subscribe there. You can watch that one next. And don't forget to get out and play.